So Sean Venom Feng X is apparently at the focus of attention again. And apparently this is about something that dates back all the way to 2007 in which he made a rather unfortunate video more or less blaming the Jews for what happened to them during the Holocaust. And apparently he made a video trying to kind of explain himself. I suppose this all was stirred up again because from what I've heard the guy has gone to New York and is joining Jews for Jesus and I suppose some people thought it would be a good time to drag the whole thing up again about what he said about the Jews back in 2007 because the Jews for Jesus that he's joining might be interested in hearing this sort of thing about their new member. But that's neither here nor there. What is interesting is that apparently from what I hear and I can't check this for myself because Sean has made the video private but apparently Sean has tried to post a video in which he backpedals from that original position somewhat and he's trying to clarify his position and what I want to respond to here is an analogy that he drew trying to explain his position and all I can do is relate it to you the way it was related to me by Moriaku and I can only assume that his rendering of what Sean said was accurate and if anybody can direct me to where Sean actually says it I would be grateful but anyway the way Sean tried to backpedal from this was to try and compare the whole blame game to a situation in which a child is standing by the side of the road and Mammy is warning the child don't cross the road it's very dangerous you have to be very careful crossing the road don't do it just be careful and the child refuses to listen to Mammy crosses the road without looking and of course get knocked, gets knocked down by the car and what Sean is implying obviously is that what happens to the child is the child's own fault the child is not listening to good advice it takes an unnecessary risk and it bears the consequences and who is to blame well Sean sadly your analogy fails and I'll explain to you why because first of all we could be pedanting about pedantic about your actual scenario and for example point out that even if the child crosses the road there are other agents involved in that situation because what about the car driver shouldn't he or she be paying attention to the road hmm? but even if you then backpedal even further and paint a different scenario in which the child is facing a force of nature for example there's a terrible storm raging outside and mommy says to the child don't go outside in the storm because it's very dangerous and the child doesn't listen and goes out in the storm anyway and gets swept away and killed yes you see in that sort of scenario when you paint it like that there is really only one agent involved in this scenario and that agent makes decisions the child makes decisions the rest of what's going on are all inanimate impersonal forces of nature that the child is subjecting itself to so if we need to attribute responsibility to what happens to the child there's only one agent involved in the scenario the child so I suppose any responsibility that could be attributed has to be attributed to the child fair enough but that is not a good analogy for what you think will happen to anybody who doesn't accept Jesus as the Savior is it Sean think about it again you are sitting there warning us about what will happen to us if we do not believe in your God worship your God and um, accept Jesus as our Savior but the problem is that in the scenario that you are painting there is more than one agent involved say you are warning me about the dire consequences of not believing in your God and not worshiping your God not accepting Jesus as my Savior the thing is 
while I am involved as an agent making a decision, another agent is involved, according to your mythology anyway, who is going to punish me, and that's your so-called God thingy. So the punishment that is meted out to me is the result of a decision made by your God. Your God decides to punish me, does it? You see, and then it's very important to take that realization and to look at your position. And that's why it's very important, Sean, that you now realize that I'm not going to talk about your God at all. To me, the word God is a meaningless three-letter string, and your God concept is logically incoherent, unimportant, irrational, and of no consequence. What is important is your attitude to your God concept and especially in this scenario that you've just painted. So again, you are warning me of dire consequences. And all this backpedaling that has been happening in relation to the Jews and the Holocaust and the Jews for Jesus and all this, where you're trying to paint it like you're not condemning people, isn't really going to help you, Sean. You see, the problem here is thus. This is a scenario. I am not interested in your so-called God, in your Jesus character, or anything like that. It's of no interest to me. And you now claim that as a result, your God is going to punish me. And you're trying to paint this as if you have my best interest at heart, as if you want me to be saved that you don't want this to happen to me but I'm going to tell you straight up that I will never be interested in your nonsense I will never be convinced by your nonsense and I will die a godless heathen so you now have the choice to decide for yourself what that will mean for me. And here comes the important bit. I don't want to discuss your God with you. Like I said, it's of no interest to me. What I want to discuss with you is your attitude to what's going to happen to me. Because think about it. If I were to reject your God, not interested in it, and I'm now going to suffer eternally. You try to paint it as if that's something that you wouldn't want to happen to me. But it is going to happen to me. And your God, according to you at least, whatever this God thing is that you keep on harping on about, is going to inflict this suffering on me. You see, I would be quite content with leading a life of my three score and ten years or whatever is I'm going to live and then just cease to exist and do not pass go nothing else but according to you I run the risk of something called eternal suffering and um, you don't want that to happen to me why not why don't you want that to happen to me you see, you put yourself into a bit of a dilemma here, Sean. You can't actually say that you wouldn't want that to happen to me, because surely that would be a bad thing. Because remember, it's your God that's inflicting this on me, according to you. So if that's a bad thing, then your God is doing something bad to me. So, does that mean that your God would be wrong then? I don't see you arriving at that conclusion. So your God is right. 
your God would be right to inflict horrendous and eternal suffering on me. You would consider that to be right for me. You would consider that to be fair and just. So don't give me this nonsense about how you wouldn't want horrible things to happen to people. Of course you do. If you don't, you'd be in direct conflict with what you claim your own God's position is. Surely you wouldn't want to put yourself in opposition to your own God, do you, Sean? So stop trying to fudge the issue. Stop trying to bullshit us because you do feel that it would be right and just for many, many people on this planet to die and then to go to some magic la-la land where they will be, will be suffering for eternity. And don't pretend otherwise. It's very unbecoming to see somebody lie like that. <laughs>